again. In this video, we're going to talk about some of the things that you need to remember when you're typing into a Python program. So these would be some of the things that might cause problems, such as curved um, apostrophes or curved quotation marks, since those are not ASCII characters. And if you're wondering, ASCII, it's like a computer language, all right? So we have symbols for all the things that show up on our screen when we're typing in something like Word. And some of them are ASCII characters and some of them are not. And Python, at least within the CoCalc environment, will only accept ASCII characters. So let me share my screen with you and we'll get started. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do again is you wanna to navigate to the Python projects folder in D2L. And then you wanna come down to the section that says using CoCalc and Jupyter Notebooks for Python. We again want to open up the document, the PDF file using CoCalc and Python. I have it open in another window. So when we open this file, we want to again, open up the breadcrumb, which looks like an open textbook up here in the upper left. It normally will open on the pages view, which is not what we want. We want the outline or table of contents view, which is right here. In the last video, we discussed how to access CoCalc and how to set up a Jupyter Notebook and also how to basically set up a project. In this video, we wanna talk about some of the basic tips for using Python and what may cause problems in Python. So this is at the top of that document. So we're starting at the top. Now, one of the things I want to remind you over and over again is that you need to save your file often. So there is a green save button within the um, Jupyter Notebook and you can see it right here, right? It's on save. Now it's grayed out right now and not allowing me to do it because it's been more than five minutes since I've been in this file and it has gone to sleep, right? And that happens quite a bit. And I'll show you how to detect when that happens and then how to get it to reactivate all your lines of code. But again, you want to save often. Control S again will save within this notebook. Now, one of the most important things that you can do when you're programming is to put comments into your code. Now, you may in the real world anticipate that they'll only be using your program for five years or 10 years, in which case you might still be around at the company and you can explain what you did and why you did it. But the fact of the matter is you really don't know how long your program is going to be in use. There were programs that were written way back in the 30s and 40s for elevators, and everyone was freaked out when it turned the year 2000 because nobody who wrote the code was still alive. And they didn't know what was going to happen when the millennium had its change over into the year 2000. So it was a big freak out right? Actually, they continued working and it was all fine. But the people who wrote the code probably didn't anticipate that those elevators would still be running in the year 2000 on the same program that they wrote. And if they had put in comments that explained each step of the code, the people that were working on the elevators later down the road in the late 1990s wouldn't have been so worried about what was going to happen on the elevators. So we do want to make sure we put comments. In some ways, the comments are as important or even more important than the code. They tell people what you're doing. All right, so there are two basic ways to comment inside of a Python notebook. One of them is with triple quotation marks, which you can see right here. And the other one is with the hashtag symbol, which you see here. Let's look at the actual Python notebook and see if we can see different ones. So here in this line, you can see that I've got in input line one, so it says in and then brackets around the one, you'll see there's a hashtag and then there's an explanation. And what I'm doing is I'm giving explanations for what follows. Now, I don't know if I ever use the triple quotations in this particular document. It doesn't look like it, but you can, if you have a longer, quote a longer comment to make, something that's going to go over multiple lines of code, then you want to use triple quotation marks. And when you do the triple quotation marks, 
it's not just one symbol at the beginning, the way that it is with the hashtag. Instead, you have to enclose that entire comment inside triple quotes. Now, if you type the triple quotes directly into uh, CoCalc in the Python Jupyter Notebook, they'll come out as absolutely straight. So they'll be like this. Now, if you type your program instead in Word and then copy paste it in, Word automatically makes them curved. So one thing that you can do is after you type it, you can immediately hit Control Z, which will undo the fixing that it did to make it curved, and then it will be straight. Um, there's another way of fixing it if you're in Word, if you want the straight ones, and that's to use the ASCII character for the double quote. The double quote is an X followed by the number 22, no space in between. So you literally type X22 and hold the alternate key down and hit the X key. And when you do that, it will take the X22 and convert it into a double quote that are straight, no curve to them at all. You can get a single quote by doing X27 and then holding down the Alt key and hitting the X key. If you're on a Mac computer, it does the same thing. It will, um, straight quotes are the default, except in Word, which always makes them curly. So um, you can do the Command C and that will undo them there, right? Now, there is a way inside of a Jupyter Notebook to print a non-ASCII character like a curved apostrophe. And when you do this, it will typically for us be inside of something like a a plot that we're doing a graph or we want to put a label on the graph or we want to label something within the graph. So here you'll see in the code right here in this document, you'll see it says from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. Okay, so we'll talk about what that means in just a second. But right here, you'll see it says plt.title. plt is shorthand for plot. So it's going to plot the title. And I want to leave this um, apostrophe right here as a curved one. So I type a U at the beginning, and then I'm going to type a quote mark, and these have to be straight. And then the U tells it to ignore any non-ASCII character inside of what's between the two quote marks and print it just as it appears. And so it will do that. And you can see right down here on the title to this plot, you'll see that it left it as curly, whereas the one on Newton's method was straight. So it left that one as straight. OK, so hopefully that makes sense to you what we're doing. Now, what is this from matplotlib import pyplot as plt? Um, well, matplotlib is the math plotting library, which has all these different commands and like routines in it to plot different kinds of things. So we want to import from the math plotting library something called PyPlot, which allows us to plot within a Python program. Now, mathematicians being kind of lazy, PyPlot's just too long for us to type. So we abbreviate it as PLT. So PLT tells the computer which routine to pull from the math plotting library. So plt.title means go to the routine called plt and pull up the title command. And what it does is it puts a title onto a plot for me. Okay. So now the next thing that we want to talk about is we want to talk about some of the characters that Python in the default setting does not use. Now you can change this under settings, but then you may forget and it's kind of, uh, can get into trouble. So by default, Python does not use the tab key. So if you import from Word, make sure that you don't use the tab key to indent, make sure that you space it over. And the default for the number of spaces in Python is four. Right? This can also be changed in the settings um, if you prefer five or something like that, um, that's fine. You can also change it to recognize tabs. I leave it 
in the default mode, which is four spaces indent something. Now indentation in coding is actually like a command or an instruction to the computer. So the indentation isn't to make it look pretty, it's actually a part of the code. So you wanna make sure that when it needs to be indented, you indent, and when it's not supposed to be indented, you don't indent, okay? Now, some other helpful tips. Um, remember that I said that it will often go to sleep. So it, the default is five minutes. This can also be changed in settings, um, but the default is every five minutes. If you haven't done anything in the program, it falls asleep, okay? Now, how do you know it fell asleep? If you try to open up a new line, it's gonna call that new line number one. So you can see right here, these are input one, input two, and so on. There's also some output lines because I've already executed some code and so forth. Input three, blah, blah, blah. Let's say I wanted to add an input line somewhere. So if I wanna add an input line right here and I wanted to add code and I click on that, the first thing I want to do, maybe let's type in a comment um, to three. And you'll notice that it automatically gave me the three at the beginning and the three at the end, but it's positioned the cursor in the middle. So I can type, um, this is a blank line comment, All right? And now the next thing that I wanna do is I want it to execute the line. So I hold down the shift key and I hit enter. And it's gonna take it a little while. It is slower on the free version. Um, wow, it's taken it a long while. Okay, so it's thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it, sending to be evaluated. Boy, this is a long time. At any rate, it should come up with the number one again, which is out of order based on what we've had. And this is how I would know that it's actually gone to sleep. All right, there it goes. And you can see it's got a one. So if you're way down in the document and you create a new line of code, and it numbers it one again, the whole thing has gone to sleep. It's forgotten everything you told it to do. So what are you gonna do instead? Well, besides saving often, what you wanna do, and of course the default is to save every 45 seconds, which is usually pretty good. Um, that can also be changed in settings. What you wanna do is you wanna come over here and we'll see on the file that you can click on the icon that says cell right here. And then it gives you some options to run cells. So you can run a particular cell. This just runs one cell. Run cells and select below, run cells, insert cell below, run all, run all above, run all below. So you can have it rerun the cells. Now, when I say it forgets what you input, I mean it forgets everything. It forgets that you imported PyPlot from Math Plotting Library. It forgets that you imported something called NumPy or SimPy. All that is gone. So generally speaking, what you wanna do is you wanna come over here, you wanna click on cell and you want to run all. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna start at the top of the file and it's gonna slowly go through and run them all down, all right? So it's gonna come through and it's gonna run them one at a time starting at the top. Now you'll notice that it numbered this two. Why? Because it was still awake and that line of code, that comment that I added was one. So it's not gonna keep them in order. If it's already awake, it's gonna now number that with two and the next is three and so on as we move on down the line, All right? And so you can see that it is still plotting as it comes down. You can see that it did indeed wake everything back up and import everything. Now we'll see right here, there's an import NumPy as NP. Now NumPy is, stands for numeric Python. And these are programs that uh, manipulate numbers, all right? So if you wanna add numbers, multiply numbers, raise to powers, take square roots, but everything's the number, then you want NumPy. Um, and again, that's because we're, um, too lazy to write NumPy, we abbreviated NP. And then we have symbolic Python, which we abbreviate SymPy, S-Y-M-P-Y. Now, symbolic Python works on variables. So if you want to take the derivative of x squared plus x plus five, and you want 
two X plus one, then that's symbolic. You don't have numbers in there. So it's symbolic. So you would have to import um, sim, uh, symbol lab or SymPy. All right. So um, I hope that this makes sense to you and that you're starting to understand a little bit about how to use Python. We want to recap that you need to remember to often save, 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 save. If you need to select a cell, you can click on the left side of the cell. You can also select all in a cell with control A that will select everything in the cell. And if you click here on the left, you'll see it makes it blue. That means you've selected that cell. And then you can come up here and you can um, do different things with it. You can also edit it. You can even delete that particular cell, right? You can copy the cell, cut the cell, whatever you want to do with it after you've selected it. And then when you click off, of course, it goes to green. That means it's not selected. So if you want to select everything, you can do a control all, you can control copy, control paste, all of those commands still work. I hope this helps. And in the next video, we'll be taking a look at your specific Python project.